Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we have a kind of special review. This will be the one that you guys will see on Christmas Eve, which of course in Scandinavia is when most people will celebrate, you know, their kind of main Christmas event. So I wanted to do a kind of nice Scandinavian beer for you today and I found one I think that is, you know, perfectly Christmassy and uh, it's a brewery that I've never tried anything from before, so very curious to see how, uh, how this one turns out. So for the first time today we are going to go to Servicium who are from Oslo in Norway and we're having a taste of the chocolate salty Christmas balls. This one's an Imperial Stout coming in at 10% ABV and of course the artwork on this one as you can see um, it looks like a tribute to, I actually think you know with the name that this one has this will be referring to South Park and I don't think I've ever mentioned it on the channel but I absolutely fucking love South Park. I really, I, you know it's one of my favourite um, TV shows, I always watch it when it comes out or when the new episodes come out on the South Park Studios, I absolutely love it. Um, but yeah, I think if if I'm remembering correctly, there's an old episode of South Park where it's uh, Santa gets kidnapped by Al Qaeda or the Taliban, and uh, you know Jesus goes to rescue them, and there's a big gunfight, and then Jesus gets killed by the Taliban basically. And I think this artwork, and you know, going by the name, the chocolate salty Christmas balls, that's always obviously a reference to uh, the song that Chef used to sing. In South Park so yeah I, I thought this was very very cool you know Christmassy in South Park what's not to like and a big imperial stout and the Scandinavians and um, all three countries of course tend to do very very well when it comes to the imperial stout category so as I say my first time encountering this brewery I do have another special beer from these guys that I've had for a while that I'm saving for a, a certain number of review but um, yeah looking forward to this one and as always I hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer and of course a Merry Christmas to those of you watching in Scandinavia and tomorrow a Merry Christmas to those of you watching from the rest of the world. So uh, so yeah, let's get on with this one then. So as always with my reviews, I'll tell you a little bit about the history of the brewery. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that hopefully I can do in the future from Servicium. You will see at least one more beer reviewed from these guys in the near future. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Norwegian beers that I've reviewed for you. I'm adding to that whenever I get the opportunity and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Servicium then. So as I mentioned to you earlier, Servicium are based in Oslo and they were founded back in April of 2015 by three friends. So this is Pushkin Hama, Martin Borunder and Shea Martinson. But they started home brewing together in Martin's basement which was you know only a little 20 metre squared space and they started brewing there back in early 2013 and at that time they were calling their early bre creations Brewmans but they went on to win a, home, a couple of home brewing competitions and this actually led to one of their beers which was called Citrus Warehouse being produced on the larger scale at the Crow Bar Brewery, but soon they started doing contract brewing and they've brewed beers with various different breweries across Scandinavia. They had one at Sugards, which was in, uh, in Denmark, if I remember correctly, some at Dugas, which is in Gothenburg here in Sweden, uh, Alsman, which I think, I want to say that's Trondheim in Norway they're from, and also Ego, which I believe is another um, I forget if they're from Denmark or Norway, but they brew quite a lot of their beers up there as well. But today they're a seven-person outfit, and uh, in 2017 they opened their first bar, which is called the um, Gjokeridet, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, which means the Cuckoo's Nest, and this is in the Groenland neighbourhood of downtown uh, Oslo. And this is where they're actually in talks at the moment, I think, to open up their own brewery at some point as well. So, um, so yeah, it's interesting that. And as I say, this is a brewery that I'm starting to see more and more of, particularly when I go across across the Copenhagen. I don't I, I don't think I've seen um, many of these actually come through the small parties through say Stenbolag. I don't think they've got a regular beer in Sweden here yet but that might be something that they'll do in the future particularly if they're producing their beers at, um, at Dugas as well. So yeah interesting times for these guys like I said but yeah that's all you really need to know about the brewery just now. There wasn't too much information available on these guys so you know they started off as a kind of gypsy or contract brewer I guess you would say and they are looking to kind of set up their um, their own place at the moment, but there's a lot of good beers coming out of Norway. I mean, you've got Lervig, you've got Amundsen, you've got Servicium, Al 
Ostman are a fairly established name. Now, uh, there's obviously Nugnau were the ones that kicked it off. Hanbrig area. You know, the Norwegians are doing some pretty awesome stuff and I really do need to get up there. I've heard there's a very good beer festival in, uh, in Bergen. So I need to get up there at some point and uh, have a little look at that. But um, yeah, that's definitely something I would love to do in the uh, in the fairly near future. But yeah, let's get on to the actual tasting of this beer itself. And you know, one of the things, we'll get rid of the brewery notes just now, but yeah, one of the things you are always going to notice about Cervicium is, you know, the quality of the artwork. The artwork on these cans is absolutely beautiful. But yeah, there you can see chocolate salty Christmas balls, um, Chef's Song obviously from South Park, and there is Santa getting... Uh, Tied up, I guess, by the Al Qaeda or whatever they are, the Gremlins or whatever. I, I do, I do think this is meant to be a reference to uh, to South Park, just going by the the name here. But yeah, cro uh, chocolate salty Christmas balls, Imperial Christmas Stout. First of all, keep the can out of the light. He hates bright light, especially sunlight. It'll kill him. Second, don't give him any Imperial Stout, not even to drink. But the most important rule, the rule that you can never forget, no matter how much he cries, no matter how much he begs, never drink him after midnight. So. Uh, yeah, so yeah, it'll be a reference to that the Gremlins film as well. But I wondered when they've got Santa kind of uh, beaten up like that too, and when it's chocolate salty Christmas balls. I always I thought this, you know, I think it's Gremlins and it's South Park actually. I've not seen the Gremlins films in years. That's a very good point. One thing about this can as well is it's one of these ones that you get from like Amundsen. I've seen these with Amundsen Brewery before as well, where it's um, you pull the top off, the whole top actually comes out of the can, and you can drink the beer straight out of it. But since it's a beer review. Um, we're not going to do that for this one. But yeah, 10% Imperial Stout from Oslo in Norway. Come on. Oh, there we go. I thought I was doing it wrong for a minute there because it wasn't opening up. But yeah, let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting. And as soon as you open this beer up, you're going to get overloaded with chocolate and uh, brown sugars and things in this one. But yeah, look at that. Nothing unexpected from this beer. In terms of appearance, you know, it looks pretty much as you would expect. But yeah, let's put, I'm trying to think, yeah, we'll put it to the Santa. This, I like the Santa artwork on this one, but yeah. So yeah, as you can see with this beer, it's poured a lovely dark ebony rosewood colour. There's a solid kind of two-third finger of a frothy, quite dark tan head on this one. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and a few little ones just heading up towards the bottom of that head there. But you know, overall, it looks uh, pretty nice, but nothing overly surprising in terms of, uh, you know, appearance from an Imperial Stout. This one looks like a lovely, lovely beer. If I hold it up to the light, there is a little bit of a kind of Coca-Cola coloured edge to this one. But as I say, nothing overly surprising at all from this beer in terms of, uh, of its appearance. So yeah, let's take a closer look at the aroma and just see how we get on with this one. Ooh. It's interesting that it's actually got a little bit of that almost phenoly medicinal smell to it as well, which is kind of interesting. That's the first impression I got of this. It does smell a little bit kind of medicinal, this beer. But, you know, beer, as I always like to say, is medicinal. But, yeah, lots of nice sweet chocolate in this one. Yeah, so there's a good mix in there between a sort of high cocoa chocolate and a sweeter milky chocolate. Um, yeah, some nice brown sugars in there. It's got a sort of licorice, you know, that sort of medicinally, kind of phenol sort of thing. I think that, you know, it's probably licorice, you know, the Scandinavians absolutely love licorice. And, you know, I've probably just said the wrong thing to start up with. I think, you know, there's definitely a licorice element to this beer, 100%. Yeah, and I, I say it's one thing that I've really kind of got into a little bit more. I never used to like licorice, but since I've come to, to Scandinavia, maybe their licorice is just a little bit better quality than the stuff we had back in Scotland. But um, I've really started to like licorice, and you you know, it's, it's with a lot of these stouts, you know, the Swedes, they do try and sneak that, um, and the Swedes and the Norwegians and the Danes, they always try and sneak a little bit of that licorice flavour in there, but it, you always see that with different foods and things that go to different countries. They always gear it to the local palate. And, um, yeah... With this one, definitely a big licorice note to this. There's maybe some kind of woody and nutty undertones in there, but a lovely big um, chocolatey note. It's kind of a mixture between a sort of milky chocolate and also some higher cocoa um, chocolate as well. But yeah, I really like what this um, what's going on with this beer. It's really just very, very nicely done. 
yeah, lovely brown sugars in there as well. I'd say it's a kind of toasty caramel, but at the same time it's quite sweet and you can pick up a little bit of that sort of um, salty note out of it. And there's maybe an almost like slightly pastry-ish kind of thing or something going on in there too. It's quite an interesting aroma, this one. A little touch of earthiness from the hops, of course, and there's also some kind of red fruity notes in there as well. Like I was saying, this beer for me, it does have a little element of that almost phenoly and um, medicinal quality that you can sometimes get from the likes of the Belgian quadruples and the Belgian Bruins. But um, yeah, nice little bit of a kind of figgy note in there. There's a little bit of a raisiny sharpness, but also some sort of candied red fruit esters as well. I like how everything is, um, is going together in this one. So as I always say, just take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck into it. But yeah, very curious to try my first beer from uh, Servicium. This is the first time I'm actually tasting one of their beers. So yeah, let's get stuck into the, this one then. This one is the Chocolate Salty Christmas Balls from Servicium, a contract kind of gypsy brewer from Oslo in Norway. I hope you guys uh, watching all over Europe that celebrate on the 24th, I hope you guys have a very, very Merry Christmas and thank you for all this, your support throughout uh, 2018 it's been. So yeah, let's get stuck into this beer. Slange Skull. Yeah. That one's quite nice actually. I like how everything's going together in this. It's not quite as sweet as I was expecting. I thought this would be a really big kind of sweet imperial stout this beer and that's in you know I, I, in chocolate salty Christmas balls I thought you know it's going to be a kind of chocolate maybe salted caramel type uh, flavour this one it does have you know it is it is leaning a bit towards the sweet side of things but it's more well balanced than um, I was thinking it was going to be you know and um, I say that you know again maybe in this video I'm saying the wrong thing you know with this beer it's got a nice sort of roasty part, it's got the sweeter chocolate on top and also some of the kind of caramelly notes. I like how um, everything's going together in this one. But yeah, I'll say straight away, this is a really nicely done beer. When I checked this one out on Rate Beer earlier, I think it had like a 90... 5 or an 86 overall and it was a 50 within the Imperial Stout category and you know as I always say take rate beer with a little bit of a kind of pinch of salt but what that will tell you is it's a very good Imperial Stout but it's quite quirky within the style and from tasting this one I would agree with that because it's quite it, it's it's um it's quite different from other Imperial Stouts that I've had actually it does have an element that medicinal quality that I was picking up in the um, and the, the aroma of this is coming out in the flavour as well. So take a few sips of this, as I always say, particularly with dark beers, sugar it around your palate and let your whole mouth adjust to it um, before you get you go too far. But yeah, let's try and break this down then. So. With this beer, you can feel there's a little touch of roasty black malt just kind of forming the linchpin of this beer. But the other thing is soon come in on top of that and just smooth the whole thing out. So yeah, on top of that you've got this nice, big, quite heavy actually, chocolatey malt. It's almost like a big syrupy chocolate. Um, but yeah, some high, uh, you know, some high cocoa chocolates in there, you know, the 80-90%ers. And it's almost like the whole chocolate thing is just infused with licorice. It reminds me of that kind of... There is, a, I'm sure there's a marabou actually that has licorice pieces in it and it really reminds me of um, of that kind of flavour actually. I'm not sure, I've never had Norwegian chocolate actually, I don't know if marabou are up in um, Norway as well actually. But yeah, it's like a, cho a really kind of heavy chocolatey uh, licorice infused kind of flavour that's coming out of this one. In the centre of the palate I'm getting a little bit of brown sugar but not all that much. I thought it would have been a bit more brown sugar than, than it has actually. Yeah. Now, in fairness, in the centre of the palate, you can feel this beer comes in and it's quite dark, but then it starts to sweeten up. Nice little bit of a, a sweet caramelly sort of thing in this one. As I say, in the middle of the palate, it's got that nice, it is quite a sweet caramel. It's not even like toasty or anything like that. It really is quite nice and, uh, and sweet and you can feel that. It, this beer just sweetens up after a little while. And the further into the aftertaste you go, the more of these kind of dark chocolatey notes and the more... 
of the sort of licorice flavours are coming out of this one and it starts to get a little bit, some of that roasted black malt starts to push its way out as well but yeah there's a nice sort of um, nutty flavour coming out of this one as well. If you just go towards the front of your palate a little bit but stick towards the middle of the tongue you can feel there is a little bit of a nutty element just underneath this beer and almost a little touch of a woody flavour but that's it almost feels like it's mixing quite well with the roasty black malts that are starting to push their way out of the beer as well. On the hoppy side of things then um, yeah on the hoppy side of things, it's actually very, very smooth. Um, you've got a nice little touch of earthiness in the back corners of the palate. As you come further forward, it smooths out a little bit. You've got a little touch of a floral aromatic character on the front corners of your palate, then around the very front curve of the tongue, it's just a little bit lighter and uh, and grassier as well. It's, it's nice how everything in this uh, beer goes together. Um, and of course, you've got the fruity side of the thing too. So behind the front curve of the palate, that's where you get that little oily bubble where those juicy fruity esters start to push their way out of the beer. So for me with this one, as I said, there's an element of a kind of almost phenolish um, quality to the beer, but I think it's the, the sort of licorice element to this one that is uh, giving them that. It didn't say on the website what they'd actually put in this beer or anything. But I wouldn't be surprised if they've put some, some licorice in this one to kind of um, give you that flavour. But yeah, it's got that sort of re medicinally red fruity quality that you'd expect of like cough syrup or um, or even that kind of fruity note you can get from very dark chocolate and licorice. Um, but yeah, there's a, definitely that sort of medicinal quality just underlying the whole thing. But yeah, initially, it actually has this really juicy red fruity note, there's a lot of a kind of, it's almost a little bit like Sultana's, it's got a little bit of the raisiny sharpness to it, but it's also got some of the juiciness from the the um, the lighter kind of dried grapes as well, and the other things that you would put in Sultana's, um, it's, it's, yeah, Sultana's is I think a good description, descriptor of um, the flavours that you're getting out of this one, but yeah, nice um, juicy fruity qualities there, a little bit of a kind of candied red fruit aroma in there, in our flavour, sorry, the further into the aftertaste you go, it does become a little bit more figgy, but you've also got those kind of, the, 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 the strawberry shaped sweets that you get in Haribo Starmish, you've got a little bit of that kind of candied strawberry flavour that you would expect of those in there, but in the aftertaste, it's a little bit of the roasty qualities and some of the earthiness from the hops that's pushing out, and you've also got a little bit of that red um, fruity note in there as well, and some of the chocolate, you can definitely pick up a good bit of the chocolate in the flavour of this one as well. Interestingly though, I don't feel that this beer is overly salty. Um, you know, there's maybe a little bit of saltiness in the beginning, but um, I don't, I don't, I don't particularly find this one um, overly salty. But to me, it's a very, it's a very nicely done beer. This one, you know, they've done a great job with this, and it does make me very curious about the the other things that I've done. Because the other beer that I have from these guys for a, a certain number review, like I said, I'm not going to reveal it yet. But um, the other beer that I have from these guys is um, is it's a it's another imperial stout, and I think it's a little bit more of a kind of straight up imperial stout. So as I say, very very curious see how um, how that one turns out so you'll see that review in maybe uh, a couple of months actually It'll be a couple of months before that one's ready but um yeah as I say a really really nice imperial stout this one and it's somewhere in between uh, it, it's it's leaning more towards the sweet side of things but the further you go into the aftertaste it has a little bit of the more kind of roasty toasty character as well but yeah a nice beer this one and it certainly as I said makes me very curious about some of their other beers so hopefully I can try an IPA or something from them at some point because when you try a new brewery as I always say you want to try something from the dark end of the spectrum like this and you also want something from the lighter end like an IPA or a New England IPA or something like that. So um, yeah, have a go at this beer if you get the chance and they release a new iteration of it every every year pretty much. In terms of the mouthfeel then, this one is, um, I'd say full bodied, carbonation is very very smooth, it's quite an oily mouthfeel, pardon me, that's coming out of this one. Um, you know, overall the mouthfeel, um, yeah, I'd say it's oily. It's got a little touch of creaminess to it as well. The, there's a good bit of sweetness to this one, but it's well balanced by a little bit of a kind of roasty earthiness too. Um, nice smoothness from the, you know, 
Nice little bit of smoothness from the hops in there too. A little bit of IBU coming in there. If I had to guess the IBUs of this beer, I would say it's somewhere maybe 40 or 50. Um, 60 at a push, perhaps. It's, it's probably more likely to be 50, 60 IBUs in this beer, I would say. But there's a good bit of sweetness to it as well. Nice bit of juicy, fruity quality. Like I said, a little bit of that almost kind of medicinal cough syrupy type thing. But overall, it's just a very, very solid beer. And as I mentioned earlier, that rate beer rating that this one has of being a very good imperial stout, but a little bit quirky within the style, I think suits this one down to the ground. It's an interesting beer, and I'm certainly glad that I was able to try it. It's a bit over, it, it's a bit, um, it's about time actually that I reviewed one of these servicium beers so yeah let's leave it at that for this one so again a very merry christmas to those of you that celebrate on the 24th and tomorrow you will see the start of some japanese beer reviews i've got a really nice one uh, waiting for me from my beer dealer in uh, in Osaka that I'll review for you on Christmas Day in Japan. Um, so yeah, really looking forward to that and I hope you've enjoyed this review and I do hope that you have a very nice Christmas with friends and family. But thank you again for watching and I will catch you guys very soon. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Check out my social media and make sure you have, you have a try at some of these Norwegian beers. I do hope that I can review some more Norwegian beers for you over 2019 and I want to get up there to one of their beer festivals too. So so yeah, thank you again for watching and I will catch you guys very soon. This was the Chocolate Salty Christmas Balls, a lovely Imperial Stout from Servicium in Oslo in Norway. Have a very Merry Christmas and I'll catch you guys soon with more beer reviews. Slange, skull.